In this video, I am going to solve a sequence of exercises about the financial application of geometric sequences. These are made up exercises. They are not taken from any specific previous exam questions or even from a book. I'm just going to put some made up numbers in there and see what happens. Because what I'm trying to illustrate is exactly the fact that this type of question is pretty much always the same. There's only a few variations that can happen, and I intend to show you each one of them so that you are prepared for all the usual types of questions. So this is the formula as it appears in the formula booklet, and I think that out of all of the formulas in the booklet, this may be the one that the booklet explains the most about because there is a lot of letters in here and the booklet describes each one what they mean. This doesn't necessarily happen for all of the formulas in the booklet, but for this one it does. So FV stands for the future value of an investment, PV stands for the present value of an investment, so this is the amount of money that you put in the bank today, and then after this happens for a certain amount of time, it's going to turn into that value in the future. Hopefully it's a larger value because you want to get more money. And although time can be measured in quite a few units, it can be years, months, weeks, but there is a variable in the formula that is specifically for years, okay? It's N is the number of years, it is not the number of months, it is not the number of quarters, it's not the number of anything except for years. And this is why I like the booklet for this formula because he says that very specifically N is the number of years. The other variable that he describes very specifically, it's this one called K, which is the number of compounding periods in a year. And here you have to pay attention to the fact that the same K appears in two different places in the formula. It appears in the exponent multiplied by the number of years, and it also appears in this denominator here multiplied by 100. But this is where it can become months for example, because if your interest is being compounded monthly, then you have 12 months in a year. So in that case, K is going to be 12. And that's when the exponent can become months. For example, four years is 48 months. So you're going to have 48 in the exponent here, but not because N is 48 months. No, N is four, is the number of years. But K is 12 because that's the number of months in a year. So 4 times 12 is what makes the exponent as a whole be 48. And possibly the slightly more confusing one is the R because the R appears by himself in the formula, but underneath the formula where it's explaining what is the meaning of each one of the letters, he says R percent interest rate PA. So I see a lot of students get confused by the fact that here in the description there is a percent and here in the formula there is not a percent. Apparently there is not a percent because there actually is. The symbol percent means per hundred. Cent is like a hundred. So the division by a hundred here are percent is the way that the percentage is actually appearing in the formula. But the confusion that my students sometimes make is that we know that 12%, for example, is the number 0 0.12. So if I have a problem with an interest rate of 12% PA, what goes here, 12 or 0 0.12? That's the confusion. And the answer is 12. You put the 12 here, because the percent is already in the formula. That's actually why he's describing it this way underneath the formula, because he wants to make sure you know that what you put here is the thing without the percent, because R percent is the interest rate, but you only put here the R, not the percent. So in other words, the 12, not the 12%, which is 0, 012. That said, let's go through some of the variations of the questions that he can ask you. And I think the most straightforward one is when you are given an amount of money, a description of the investment, and they just ask you what is the future value of that investment. 
So it's going to look something like that, and you just have to plug the numbers in the appropriate places in the formula. For example, n is the number of years, and in this problem, I have five years, so n is five. I also need a k, which is the number of compounding periods per year, but this one is compounded quarterly, so that means that I have four compounding periods in a year, and k is four. So I'm going to put the 4 here, but I also need to put the 4 in this other k down here as well. The present value needs to be substituted by the initial amount of money that you have to invest. In this case, it's 20,000. And finally, the only letter that is missing is R, which is the interest rate PA. So remember, it was R percent, so R is 3 because 3 percent. So let me put 3 over there. And now that everything has been substituted by a number except for the future value, then that's because the future value is the thing that I'm trying to find. He asks here, what is the future value? And I'm just going to type this whole thing as is in my calculator and see what the answer is. turns out to be this number and there were more digits here but for questions involving money we tend to stop at two decimal places rather than the usual three significant figures because it's like this is the amount of dollars and this is the amount of cents okay so example number two slight variation on the same kind of situation and you will see it's not just because i've changed the numbers I did change the numbers, but there is also another difference between this and the previous example. So let's see what numbers we have, where we should plug them in, and what to do after that. I think I'm going to start here. I have 4% PA, so R%. Percent. 4 is R. I'm going to put the 4 here in the R. I also see that I have 10 years here, so N is going to become 10 because N is the number of years. This time it's being compounded monthly, so I have 12 months in a year, which means 12 compounding periods in a year. So K, the number of compounding periods, is 12. So the 12 goes here and here as well. But now I need to pay attention to the difference between this and the previous exercise because the $30,000 is not my initial money. In fact, he is asking me how much money was initially invested. $30,000 is what I have after 10 years we have $30,000. So that's why you always have to read the whole sentence, like don't just pick the numbers because you may misinterpret the meaning of the numbers if you don't read the whole thing. So after 10 years we have $30,000, that means that $30,000 is actually the future value. And now I'm going to have one more step in my solution because I'm not going to be able to just type the whole thing all at once like I did in the previous exercise. What I am going to do is to type this whole part here that is being multiplied by PV and put the answer here. Okay, so now we have a much simpler looking equation than the one we had before. It is still the same thing because the number that I circled here turns out to be 1.49 to three significant figures, but I'm still not done because I want to find the value of PV. And what I know is that PV times 1.49 is equal to 30,000. So now I just have to solve this equation by dividing both sides by 149. So when I divide both sides of the equation by 1.49, these here cancel out, and that division on the other side I also did in my calculator, so it turns out to be this number, which is the present value of the investment that you need in this investment with this interest rate, uh, so that 10 years later, the 20,000 and a little bit turns into 30,000. So maybe you can already understand what is going on here. The only type of variation that is going to happen is that I have so many variables in this formula that I have some sort of freedom when I'm posing the problem 
on which ones to give you and which one to ask for you to calculate. So I've already given you an example when I was asking for the future value and one example where I was asking you for the present value. In example number three, I am actually going to ask you for the interest rate. So I have to give you everything else. Let's see if I've given you everything that you need. 20,000 is invested, so 20,000 is the present value. It is invested for seven years, so N is equal to seven. And after the seven years, the money grows to $30,000. So 30,000 is going to be the future value. In an investment that is compounded half yearly, so how many compounding periods in a year? Two. K is two because there are two halves in the year. So let me put K is two here and there. As expected, now we have an equation where everything has become numbers except for the variable R, which is the nominal annual interest rate that we want to find. But maybe this equation has a couple more steps in solving it. So let's see how that goes. I think I'm going to begin by doing some of the calculations that are really straightforward, such as 100 times 2 is 200, and also 2 times 7 is 14 in the exponent. But those two steps barely even count as solving an equation. Now I'm actually going to begin doing things. I am trying to find the value of r. So I need to undo all of the many operations that are happening in r here but I have to respect the order of operations and do it backwards. I have a whole other video just about solving this kind of equation if you wanna see that, but let me just point out in this example that according to the order of operations, if you are just looking at R here, the first thing that happens is that R needs to get divided by 200. That's the first operation. After dividing by 200, it needs to get added to one because that is still inside of the parentheses. But now that we have worked the whole inside of the parentheses, I still have a multiplication here and a power over there. But in the order of operations, power happens first. So that is the third operation that is going to happen in R. And finally, after that, this multiplication by 20,000 here. So when I'm going to do the steps backwards to isolate the R, I need to do first get rid of this 20,000 here. So the first thing that I want to do in this equation is to divide both sides by 20,000. Here on the right side, this just cancels that, which was the whole reason why we divided by 20,000 in the first place. Over there, that fraction is just 1.5. So now the next one that needs to be removed is the power of 14. And how am I going to get rid of a power of 14 here? What operation do I need to do on both sides of the equation? That is taking a root, but it's not a square root. It's an actually a 14th root. It's a radical of index 14. And I'm going to put that in my calculator to see how it looks. By the way, I'm using a little bit more than three significant figures there, but in the calculator, I am using even more, okay, because I don't want to accumulate approximation errors along the way. So anyway, that's just the number that this radical turns out to be. And over here on the right side, the radical of index 14 was intended exactly to cancel out with the power of 14. So now that neither of those things are there anymore, I don't need to write the parentheses anymore because there's nothing outside. There's just the inside of the parentheses. And now the next thing, according to the order that we established up here, the next thing that needs to be undone is this plus one here. So that's easy. I'm just going to subtract one on both sides of the equation. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 200 to get rid of this denominator. Of course, I used the calculator there in the end, uh, but that's the answer. 5.88% annual nominal interest rate, 
to do the things that the question was asking about. Now, I've never seen a question that gives you a bunch of information and asks you for K, the number of compounding periods. That would be a weird question because there's only very few values of K that even make sense. There is K equals one for compounding yearly, K equals two for compounding half yearly, K is four for compounding quarterly, and K is 12 for compounding monthly. That's basically all there is. So I don't think that they would do that. But what they can do is to give you a bunch of information and ask you for N, the number of years that it takes a certain investment to reach a certain value. So here's an example of that. Let's see how that works. Again, we are investing 20,000 as present value, waiting some time until it reaches 30,000 as future value. In this case, we are compounding quarterly, so K is four compounding periods per year, and the interest rate is 4% PA. So let's put a four here. We don't know the number of years. That's exactly what we're trying to find out. So just like last time, uh, before we even start solving the equation, there is some things that we can do to simplify it. This number here that we can put in the calculator, well, maybe you didn't even need a calculator for that one because it turned out to be an easy answer. But it's okay if you typed it in the calculator as well. Just be careful though, because this 20,000 here can't be a part of this initial calculation that you're doing, okay? Because, again, because of the order of operations, the 1.01, which is the big number here, first get put to the power of 4n, and then the result gets multiplied by 20,000. So be careful with this. This would be the next operation to do, but of course you can't do it right now because you don't know how much n is. So just leave the 20,000 there for now. What you are actually going to do with the 20,000 is to divide both sides of the equation by it so that it cancels out over here and on the left, we get 1.5 again. I used 30,000 and 20,000 in both examples. Um, but now I have 1.5 is equal to 1.01 to the power of 4n. And the next thing that I want to do is to make this n get out of this exponent. So whenever I have a variable in the exponent and I want to get it out of there, the tool that I use for that is log. Of course, I have used my calculator to get to the number 40.75 for this strange looking log here. And now in order to get to the value of n, all that I need to do is to divide both sides of the equation by four. And the answer to the problem is that it takes just slightly more than 10 years for the investment to grow as much as we want it to grow. Since the compounding period in this example was quarterly, it's not going to be able to be exactly 10.2. It's going to be more like 10.25, which is 10 years plus a quarter of a year. And then the actual value of the investment at that point is not going to be 30,000 exactly. It's going to be just slightly over 30,000. Uh, but that's the best answer that you can get because if you only waited 10 years, and not this extra quarter, then the investment would not have reached the 30,000 that you wanted. It's, it would be like 29,000 and something or 28,000 and something, but it wouldn't have reached 30. So this kind of thing, like this precision of getting to exactly that number is kind of difficult to get with this kind of calculation in the middle, which is the reason why this kind of question that asks for the time that it takes to get there is usually stated as an inequality, much more than as an equation like I did in my example. So they wouldn't ask necessarily for the value of the investment to become 30,000, but they would use a word such as to exceed 30,000 or to surpass 30,000, words that mean that the investment is bigger than that. So bigger than is an inequality. It's not really an equation, but it's okay to use an equation just to solve the problem like that.